Welcome to AME's Food Testing Show. This program discusses topics of interest to food safety professionals concerned about providing consumers with the safest food possible. I'm Dr. Andy Marino, the Senior Vice President of Microbiological Engineering at AME. My life's mission is to assist food safety officers with their duties in producing the safest food possible for human consumption. Welcome. That was my recorded information. Today's topic is food safety production testing with real-time PCR. My name is Andy Marino, bachelor's master and doctor from Brigham Young. Got about 20 years of scientific instrumentation experience, uh, primarily at NASA Thermal Electron, Microtech Scientific, and a company called Cepheid out of Sunnyvale, California. My experience has been in high-pressure liquid chromatography, mass spectrometry, and DNA microbiological testing using the Cepheid Smart Cycler and other thermal cyclers. Today's also I am the group leader for the LinkedIn Food Pathogen Outbreak Recall Response Group. I encourage you all to join that group if you're interested in this topic. Today's topic talks about the food safety officer's responsibilities in a production company, primarily interested in internal testing to validate a food safety program, primarily clients will ask about, hey, Andy, how do I assure that my product handling in fresh fruit and vegetables has been safe? Well, we generally refer to the handling or the processing of food, primarily with fresh groups, in capturing the product from the field through the processing facility and then off to the market after some up handling. That's primarily of inter- interest to my food safety managers because of governmental inspections of their own food safety programs and HACCP programs or hazardous control points programs. Traditionally, the internal testing to validate a food safety program has been performed with traditional culture. That is capturing a sample and inoculating that sample onto a culture plate, allowing that, those organisms to grow, and then having a trained microbiologist view those culture plates in about two to four days. The accuracy of those culture plates has, depending on the analyst, been determined to be 70% or less or greater, depending on their perspective. Another form of testing for particularly organisms which are not viable to be cultured has been traditional polymer chain reaction. This process, also known as gel electrophoresis, requires about 8 to 48 hours. It's about 90% accurate. It requires highly skilled microbiologists or technicians to perform this test. And many Food processors find this to be quite onerous. Today's discussion will focus on the Cepheid real-time polymers chain reaction, which requires about an hour or 30 minutes for the runtime with some sample preparation. This is found to be about 99% accurate in most cases for detecting of the major food pathogens, which are pathogenic to humans. Uh, these are E. coli species, E. coli 015787 7, and their related families, Listeria species, and Salmonella. As we look at what has been done, the reason I emphasize Cepheid, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, in their website showing the BAM manual, outlines several procedures for the detection of E. coli, primarily using uh, the Cepheid system and traditional microbiology. I'd like to show this next slide that I have on the screen to show that the U.S. Food and Drug Administration uses the uh, Cepheid program and has actually placed the Cepheid Smart Cycler into a mobile home and and with their teams actually go out and test fresh fruits and vegetables using the Cepheid Smart Cycler. 
What I like to emphasize with food safety managers is to look at a total system solution, all the way from the product growth area, product production processing area, and then the finished product. The primary goal for food producers is to have an empowering solution. They want to be in control of that testing so that there aren't any missteps with third-party testing agencies, uh, selecting the wrong test, making mistakes, and having those mistakes or those misreadings of the result, the test result, prove to be disastrous for not only their product and their own company, but also for the industry. A lot of my food producer or safe, uh, food safety managers are extremely price sensitive, and yet they're pressured to produce a safe product. Uh, many of my food safety managers rely on their uh, certifications and their food pro processing protocols. They want an easy solution, and those easy solutions are often not readily available. What I like to emphasize with my food safety managers is the implementation of an in-house microbiological or microbial pathogen monitoring system, something that they control. It's relatively easy to use in four specific areas. And I allow my food safety managers as clients to select how they want to craft their own system. I generally recommend an irrigation water testing under their own control. Many of the food certification programs require an annual test for irrigation water, but you know, an, an, an even more frequent testing in a program may be recommended on many, for many products, particularly where the product is actually touching the soil. The next step that I like to talk about food safety managers with is the product wash water. Frequently a product is brought in from the field and introduced into a wash or a bath cycle with a residence time anywhere from 6 seconds to 58 seconds to longer. Usually that is a wash water of parasitic acid or chlorine. And that wash water is then in a process refreshed or cleaned out and then new water introduced on a periodic basis. Capturing the sample at that point is a nice collection point to determine on a lot basis. During production, real-time production, capturing the sample from that wash water will give the food safety manager a lot more information that's relevant and that can be traced back to a specific production lot. Additionally, many food safety managers have found the testing of environmental points in their production facility particularly helpful. That's any machine or any type of mechanism that actually touches the food product. This can be performed on many bases, but primarily it is a microbial pathogen screen of some kind looking for the buildup of, again, E. coli species, listeria, or salmonella. Quite often, a lot of my clients ask me, well, Andy, what about if I just do the finished product? Well, finished products is only one of the four areas that I suggest to my food safety managers. Finished product is critical to test. could be done on a lot basis. could be done on a statistically manageable bases, and it's justifiable under SPC, statistical process control. So let's review those four points again. Irrigation water, product wash water, environmental testing points, or the finished products. And, you know, as I sit in consultation with clients, I find that many of my lead management team will say, Andy, if we did engage a program, uh, I'm looking at the math here, and, and we, we're given our current volume of our production, I'm looking at Eight to 9,000 tests a month if I run the number of tests that you're talking about. And my response to that is that these test points are completely under the control of the food safety manager. They know their operations a lot better than I do. A lot of them will say, Andy, we have an outside service to irrigation. Uh, I do like the idea of testing the product wash water. We can do one at the beginning or at the end of each wash cycle. Uh, we use ATP for environmental testing, and I want to do some finished product testing occasionally on a lot basis or on a daily basis. And again, the whole idea is to support the food safety manager in his program, her program, in assuring both the customers 
of the food production facility and the eventual consumers that the product is safe. As I look at water screening for foodborne pathogens, I primarily look at water as our best testing medium. The irrigation water, the wash water, we're looking at primarily at four S's. E. coli species as a general, you know, there are 800 plus varieties or species of E. coli. One we hear a lot about is E. coli 15787H7. We hear about other varieties or species. But this is the one that primarily was brilliant in 2006 in lettuce and spinach. We look at listeria species and salmonella. These are primarily present in fruit and vegetables. So in today's discussion and the empowering of food safety managers, we find that these are the primary assays, E. coli species, E. coli 15787, listeria, and salmonella. AME offers these assays in a quantitative real-time PCR format engaged in the CEFIA platform, which is used by the FDA which is referenced in the FDA BAM manual and is uniformly recognized as the gold standard. A lot of other tests claim or uh, AOAC or other types of clearances, but uh, these are the ones that are mentioned in the FDA website. Uh, and some clients even say, hey, Andy, we don't, we don't we have this new test that doesn't have a clearance and it's not required by the FDA, and that's absolutely correct. But I suggest the gold standard because it is easy to use, the, the Cepheid real-time PCR instrument, and that it is field portable, it can be used in the field, and it's very easy to use as opposed to other methodologies. So that is it for today on our first radio broadcast. Feel free to do some further research on ame-qpcr.com. That is AME's website. Or feel free to send me an email, andy.moreno at ame-qpcr.com. Thank you very much, and look forward to our next chat.